Hello everybody and welcome to Pierre Hidari's classic profile of the Mercedes 300 SEL 6.3. So I'm gonna resume my stance here. So this is what January looks like in Florida. The weather is absolutely perfect. All the Florida men are out boating, hiding their drugs in the swamp. And we have here the most notorious Mercedes Benz ever made in a place you would probably least expect to find it. Now, what is this you ask? Well, if you know what the 6.3 is, then you're probably devouring, you're probably like just sitting here waiting impatiently for this video to begin. And if you don't know what the 6.3 is, I'm going to have to explain it to you because you've been missing this your whole life. In 1967, uh, an engineer named Eric Vaxenberger was completing the final, uh, the final details of a project that involved transplanting the 6.3 liter M100 engine into the W109 chassis, which up to that point was only available as a six cylinder car. As a result, uh, Waxy, who originally put the engine in a 250SE coupe, uh, decided that he was finally ready for the production version, which came out as the 300SEL 6.3 in the early months of 1968. These cars were not designed as a car that you could take out on weekends or as like a temperamental high performance car. This was a car that Mercedes designed and built for people to use as much as they wanted to. And they're really not as problematic or difficult as people think as long as you stay on top of certain parts like the air suspension system or the uh, well, the brakes, because <laughs> you're only going to need them. Now, the 6.3 is powered by, as we said, the 6.3 liter M100 engine. This engine was Mercedes' first V8, and it was a unique design because it had an overhead camshaft on each cylinder bank, and fuel was supplied by an eight plunger mechanical injection pump. Now, some people like Carl Middelhoff have pulled the who's supposed to be like the world-renowned 6.3 expert, have pulled the injection pumps off and put an EFI system on, which is ridiculous. I think it's sort of like castrating a bull or a stud horse. When people open the hood, they wanna see this beautiful injection pump, which is why one of the things that makes a 6.3 so unique. Other things that make the 6.3 so unique are the fact that it is fully suspended with air bellows. What is an air bellow, you ask? Well, I'm gonna show you. There's not a coil spring in this car. In fact, these things, air bellows, are what suspend the 6.3, and these breathe through four of these, four suspension leveling valves, which are given air pressure by this pump, which is stored in a tank inside the front left fender. Every so often you have to push the nozzle on that tank to get any alcohol and water mixture out. And uh, if you don't do that, then your bellows start to rust from the inside out. But these bellows are what keep the car up. Now I replaced this bellow because it was starting to leak. <laughs> so even though it was a brand new bellow, but the, the truth about the air suspension bellows is that they're actually a very reliable component. They're tougher than a tire and they're uh, not that hard to replace and Mercedes has them for about $340 each. So that's the cost of keeping the 6.3 up in the air. Not to mention, if you saw some of our other clips, the 6.3 suspension is height adjustable, making it capable of clearing all sorts of obstacles in the road, whether it is a dead raccoon or a pallet or maybe parts of somebody's ice chest, but not the whole ice chest and quite possibly the limbs of any Florida man that has been run over by a truck. <laughs> the 6.3 though also has a sinister reputation, especially if you're a mechanic. These cars are notoriously complicated to work on. There are several reasons for this. The first one is that the 6.3 demands total dedication from the mechanic. In other words, proper service of one of these cars is a DAO. It is not just a thing that you do, it is a way of life. It is a total understanding of what the machine is and how all of its parts work together. It is an appreciation and a reverence for the engineering that was put into this car. 
and the fact that everything was jam-packed in here from day one. So you have to understand the sequence of assembly and disassembly. Now, what makes the 6.3 such a crazy, insane, wild car? Well, this engine that we talked about before makes 300 SAE horsepower, which uh, roughly translates in the in the high compression version mercedes rated it at 250 din horsepower now we're not really sure if mercedes was telling the truth about the power output of this engine because when amg took this motor and adapted it for use in the red pig it became a lot more powerful and uh really this is sort of this is the kind of car where people will tell you stories about and I was driving my Camaro 350 SS or I was driving my 427 Corvette and I encountered a 300 SEL 6.3 and it left me in the dust. One of the really amazing things about the 6.3 was I've never heard an account of it losing a drag race in the 70s. Now, maybe it would lose to a lightweight side oil or Ford Galaxy or something, but these cars were just insane and sinister and fast. They were, again, really difficult to work on in fact we just had to put head gaskets on this car you can't tell because hopefully we did a really nice neat job of reassembling everything but we had to take the entire top end of this engine apart and it it really it, it injured my shoulder and it sort of wore me out for several weeks i had to take a week off from work afterwards just to recuperate you know, but this is this is essentially what the 6.3 is—the most demanding car for the for the uh, for the mechanic to service. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about some of this this specific car's features. What we're seeing here is a 6.3 1969 in 542 burgundy red with cognac leather. This cognac leather interior is the original cognac leather that was applied and installed in this car in 1969 and boy is it beautiful in fact if you look closely at some of the shots of the leather in this car you can tell that modern replacement leather is totally inferior not just because of the perfect shininess but the thickness too i mean this is like italian shoe leather it's so shiny and so smooth you know not not just from not just from being sat in for years, but because of the tanning process and because the cows used to make this roser leather had very thick hides. The splotchiness of the cognac dye is also evident, which is something that if you ever want to have cognac leather re-dyed, think again. You can't because you will never, ever be able to imitate this. It is one of those things that is like the Mona Lisa smile or like the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel or possibly the sounds of a Stradivarius. It is irreplicable. So think about that before you have any of your original leather replaced in your Mercedes Benz. Now we talked a great deal about the 108 and 109 chassis in our video on the 280 SE 4.5, but there are some specific things about the 6.3 that I think deserve to be highlighted in this video that that nobody ever discusses in other words some dark secrets of this car the first one is the dual point distributor the dual point distributor was literally an intelligence test implemented by the engineers at daimler bins for all the mechanics who work on these cars why dual ignition points well dual ignition points serve two functions the first function is that they allow for redundancy. If one set of points goes down, you still have a second set of points that the engine can run off of. So if you have a point set failure, this car will keep running. The second one is something called spark duration. If you have two sets of points working on a, on a distributor cam with longer, wider lobes, just like valve duration, when you have a more aggressive camshaft, spark duration allows for two things, a smoother idle and better burn on the spark plugs. Because the 6.3's engine and combustion chambers are so massive relative to other Mercedes, the dual point system was an ideal way to implement a long duration spark that led to smoother running and 
to a degree, some relatively good fuel efficiency. In fact, these cars are capable of producing 14 miles per gallon at about 70 miles an hour, which is pretty good for such a big car. Now, if you have a 600, that's not quite the case. Being an early 6.3, there's also no hood pad, you know, just to keep weight down. <laughs> and of course, uh, this engine, because it is an early Mercedes single overhead cam engine, the valves have to be adjusted. I think Florida Man Airlines might be coming in for a landing. Oh, I guess he's good. Is he? That's the swamp copter. <laughs> and that, 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 that's how you get from that's how you get from Christmas to Bithlo. <laughs> Florida Man Airlines, room for one. The tickets are paid in food stamps, by the way. Where were we? Anyway, every 10,000 miles, the valve covers on this monster have to be pulled and the valve clearances have to be set. This is mandatory, unless you want to wear out your cams and rockers. Now, another interesting thing is the alcohol bottle. Hidden down here in the recesses of the engine, there is a canister. If you see these two screws, these hold the canister in place where you have to put lab grade ethanol in the suspension. According to Martin Worminghausen, who rebuilt all the suspension valves in this car, so obviously he knows what he's doing because the car is not sinking to its knees. This is so critical that if you don't put alcohol in year round, especially if you're in a humid climate like Florida or a very cold climate, the suspension will literally rust from the inside out or freeze when it gets exceptionally cold. This sort of behavior from the 6.3 suspension has led many people to be afraid of it. But I assure you that when you tame it, it is extremely reliable. I have only had one 6.3 air suspension failure, and that was when the check valve on my old gray car seized, which my friend Keith Morgan uh, owns now in, um, in uh, Maine. So the suspension system on these cars was available in all 109 series cars. In fact, the 109, because it had air suspension, got its own chassis designation. And when you're operating the air suspension, one of the things you can do is you can use one of the things that you can do is you can use this lever on the later car on the early cars and a push pull rod on the 70 and later cars to increase the height of the suspension. You can also lock the suspension in a given position in this particular setting right here. Other than that, the main difference that the air suspension cars is how they drive. You can hear it discharging air a little bit as it goes, goes off. But the, the air suspension cars have this amazing cornering and handling ability because it is an active suspension. It continually adjusts for the position, height, and pitch, roll. Uh, dive of the vehicle. There's an anti-dive bar in the front and the rear. And in fact, anti-dive suspension was never used on the 108 sedan. I thought it was earlier, but it wasn't. The anti-dive geometry was only incorporated on the W109, W112, and W100 to give the car the absolute best braking and handling characteristics available of the time. Did I, did I say of the time? Well, actually, even today, this car out handles uh, and I, I would say it out rides and in a way it out handles certain cars because its tolerance for bad roads is just amazing. I'm not necessarily talking about how it performs in a slalom, but I remember years ago, my friends Bobby and Pierre Haletzi approached me about a 300 SEL 4.5 that I owned that they wanted to customize. And they said, we're going to take all this old stuff out and put a real suspension underneath it. My quote to them was, this is the realest suspension that they ever put in an automobile. The 6.3 has extremely tough stamped metal control arms with uh, 
with kingpins and solid metal lower control arm and upper control arm bushings there's not a ball joint in it the rear axle has one master pivot and otherwise the rear axle and the rear suspension are one assembly this is probably the toughest vehicle that mercedes produced at this time and even today if i were having to go in a ra rally like the peking to paris and i had to pick between a modern mercedes suv or this i would pick this car just because i know that it would be it would do much better in some of the horrible roads without fracturing suspension components now there's really not much that's different about the trunk in the 6.3 except for one very interesting little thing you're gonna find well where are they you're gonna find things like these wheel chocks to keep the car from rolling if you service it and although i don't have them here you're gonna find a pair of bump stops and these stops can actually be installed in the suspension of the vehicle to keep the car from bottoming out in a bump now one of the things that i also really love about the slightly longer wheelbase version of the 109 is that at least with the 6.3 body and the bigger wheels etc it has a very muscular and balanced profile if you were to take the 6.3 badge off of this car you would still think that there was something muscular and sinister about it it doesn't have the graceful artistic look of the 280s or the 250 se no you look at a 6.3 and you see something that is totally bad to the bone, something that is almost evil in its composure, something where you would glance at it while it passes you at 130 miles an hour at night. And that's the statement that the 6.3 makes. It's not necessarily a car that was designed for people who want a nice, quiet, smooth driving Mercedes. It was the ultimate statement. It was the AMG Black Series of its time. This was Mercedes' most amazing invention since the 300 SL. This is the 300 SEL 6.3. <laughs> The 6.3 is not necessarily for everybody. It's not for the undedicated. It's not for the person that cuts corners and maintenance. It's not for the person that uh, is of lesser means than the person who would have bought this car when it was new. It is certainly not for the kind of person that is averse to a car that is a purely mechanical vehicle that occasionally needs to be serviced and adjusted. But what it is, is a statement about how great Mercedes was technologically during their greatest era from 1968 to 85. This was the beginning of a line of amazing cars from the 450 SEL 6.9 to the 500 SLC to the 300D turbo diesel to the, uh, to the 190E 16 valve that, that showed that Mercedes had arrived in the modern, in the, in the modern era and the modern era of mercedes-benz you could say was characterized by the invention and development of the 6.3 and the m100 engine it is so critical to mercedes that mercedes reputation today would not be what it is if they had not developed and marketed the 6.3 the 6.3 is one of those iconic mercedes that many people will desire but few people will be able to find the wherewithal the capital, the amount of time and energy needed to devote to one of these cars. And that's why it is such a special car and such a unique car. I don't believe that there is any Mercedes, uh, any high performance Mercedes that has the panache and the, f the cult following that the 6.3 does. And that's why this car is what defined Mercedes Benz from 1968 and onwards. Thank you.